Hello everybody, I'm Challenger Jacku and welcome back to part 4 of our No Ring Challenge series. We've conquered this challenge with all three members of the original trio, so now it's time to find out where it's possible to be Amy's story without collecting a single ring. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I highly recommend you do so and the links will be in the description below. However, before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general and you want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. We're aiming for 100 subscribers by April and I release a new challenge video on a weekly basis and sometimes even more than that. And of course, if you have any ideas for future challenge runs that you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, slip it down down below and I'll definitely see what I can do. Now as always, I'll quickly go over the rules of this challenge, although they're pretty self-explanatory at this point. First of all, if you collect a ring at any point, it counts as a fail and we have to restart the stage. Next, the run will begin at Twinkle Park and is completed upon the defeat of Zero. And finally, yes, the run will be glitchless, as they weren't really needed at all when routing. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Our adventure begins at the illustrious Twinkle Park, Amy meeting her companion for the run, Birdie, who managed to escape the egg carrier. Eggman is relentlessly pursuing this seemingly ordinary bird for his subordinate Zero, for a reason unknown to us at the time. Upon escaping the tin can by hiding in a restaurant, I clearly watched her enter seconds prior. Does this establishment have a no robot policy or something? She meets up with her hero Sonic by the casino, the latter reluctant to help the pair flee into the comfort of the amusement park. Now Amy's gameplay style for the most part is quite similar to Sonic's, in the sense that our objective is to head to point A to B as fast as humanly possible, with one key exception to that rule, Zero. You know the robot that we just escaped earlier? Accompanies you in each of the stages and this goal is to ensure he hunts you down without mercy. You'll constantly find that this tin can is right on your ass, trying to massacre you with the abilities at its disposal. Amy can fight back to an extent, her Pico Pico hammer is able to stagger Zero, albeit momentarily. However, this can give you the breathing space you need to tackle the number of puzzles elements in the level, or to stop him from damaging you with his homing laser. For all intents and purposes though, Amy's story quite literally plays out like a survival horror game. Her minuscule top speeding shows while she can escape Zero, you'll never outrun him for long. This inherently creates a layer of tension throughout the gameplay, Zero's audio cues always reminding you of his presence which can lead to a sense of anxiety leaving you prone to making mistakes. And that was something that was definitely amplified in this No Ring Challenge, as not only was I literally one hit away from death at all times, taking my time and surveying the area was no longer possible thanks to Zero's relentlessness, and as you'll see soon enough this led to many mistakes. With all of that said, Amy's first stage Twinkle Park takes place in the final section of Sonic's version. You know the section with the roller coaster? Right away we discover that the door we need to pass through is locked. Circulating the pool of three switches we need to hit in order to unlock it. Simple enough, apart from the fact that rings surround each of the switches, forcing us to aim our jumps into the center, all the while Zero is constantly pursuing us. I'm not even gonna lie, this did take me a number of tries. Thanks to the constant pressure I felt, I found myself misjudging each jump, collecting the rings, or just simply getting bodied by the coconuts throwing bombs my way. Once we managed to hit all three of the switches, I grabbed the species using Amy's Hammer Vault, escaping Zero's clutches for the time being within the infamous Mirror Room. Now, this section of Swingle Park just leans itself into the survival horror style that Amy's gameplay likes to capitalise on. From the creepy music to the mirrors having the ability to easily disorientate you, it's certainly not a fun time to be here. Not that that really matters right now though, as the Coconut Bandit literally decides to randomly run into me, killing Amy on impact. I should have probably killed the bandit looking back, however they usually like to remain in place preferring to throw bombs from range so I didn't expect the damn thing to charge into me like that. The second time round coconut behaves like they usually do and we're free to continue on. The only word I could use to describe the mirror room will be hell. You're placed in a narrow linear corridor fit for a boost game filled with rings, spike balls and of course the ever relentless zero chasing after you. What makes this truly difficult though is the perspective you're given. It's extremely easy to lose sight of which Amy is the real one through all of the reflections which can truly mess with your perception, meaning it becomes easy to run into rings or to your demise. Even if you're able to keep track on your positioning, you have to be careful and not use Amy's hammer fall as the resulting hitbox of the hammer can actually collect rings if you're close enough, which ended up happening to me on a number of occasions. For this run, I've learned if you just stick to the right of the wall and hold down whilst jumping normally, you're able to slip by the rings and keep Zero up there. Avoiding the pit with the moving spikes, we arrive at the second mirror hallway which is even harder than the previous. This time around, rings are placed upon both sides in sequence, meaning you have to weave from one side to the other without running to the spike balls or being slow enough for Zero to kill you. I discovered if you just stick to one side of the wall, if you have enough momentum you can jump over the trails of rings, although it was still way too close for comfort. 
Once you've cleared this, however, the rest of the stage falls into line pretty quickly. There is a panel mirror room, though it's a lot easier than the previous two. Not only do we have more space to manoeuvre around, the reflections in the mirror outright show you which tiles have a trap door underneath them. Upon finally clearing this hellhole, all that's left for us to do is to clear the final ramp that stands in your way of the balloon. Since Amy's top speed is pathetically slow, you'd want to jump your way up, gradually hugging the wall to avoid the moving spikes. Ironically enough, I did die here after hammer vaulting over the fence, thanks to Zero's slam move, which has an absurdly large radius. Just take care of avoiding the bandits and clusters of rings after this and Twinkle Park is completed without collecting any rings. Escaping the clutches of Zero, Amy showcases her uncanny ability of drinking herself, as the green metal can rocks up behind her and catches her. I'm not even gonna lie, Zero is probably one of Eggman's most loyal creations and he doesn't even get mentioned by anyone. Even Gamma forgot about his existence when he was freeing the rest of the E-Series, someone put some damn respect on his name. Despite Sonic's valiant effort, Zero succeeds in boarding the egg carrier, locking both Amy and Birdie within the prison of the ship, along with a chow egg? Is the Cho's crime just merely existing? What the hell did he even do to deserve this? It ain't even born yet. Fortunately, luck was on their side as E-102 Gamma, a robot with a flicker of sentience, releases the two, ordering them to flee from the dangers of the egg carrier. Before we could get any further, however, we're locked in a room having to play a game of whack-a-mole before we can leave. I'm not even kidding. One thing that's always bewildered me about this is that Eggman knows you've escaped, right? So he must know Gamma betrayed him here, unless this was a pre-recorded message which implies he expected Amy to escape somehow? Bloody hell Eggman, tighten up your security here. But yeah, the minigame isn't too difficult honestly. Every normal Sonic Mark grants you 100 points, whilst every Super Sonic Mark towards you 500. If you hit Eggman you lose 300 points, although it's pretty easy to avoid that as long as you aren't whacking everything in sight. If you beat the high score of 2000 points, you're granted the Warrior first that allows Amy to do a spinning attack, which is honestly useless as you have to be at a standstill to even use it. I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Now, you can get an upgrade to your Pico Pico Hammer here if you beat the highest score you set. However, it isn't required, so I didn't bother. Thought I should at least mention it though. Thanks to Egon trading the shit's formation and a bit of stifling Sonic and Tails, getting to the bridge to escape isn't as simple as it should be. Instead, Amy has to traverse through the Sky Deck. Haha, <laughs> fooled you there. Nah, she has to traverse through the Hot Shelter. However, it might as well be Sky Deck with how fast it's went downhill. Fun fact, Hot Shelter is the only stage in the game that Sonic doesn't have access to, and it makes sense given the design of this place is built around the slower moving characters like Amy and Big. As for the level itself, fuck Hot Shelter, I hate this place. Alright, the first portion isn't too bad, all we had to do is kill the coconut and open the door by spinning the cog. There is a free green shield that's just sitting there as well, making our time here all the safer. Upon avoiding that annoying bandit that can immobilise you, Zero makes his reappearance only to be outrun by a slow hedgehog that is high on the energy of the speed shoes. There's a pool with a trio of floating platforms, I found it way easier just to jump into the water and use the ladder to return to the surface, as two of the floating platforms have rings placed along them. Two more coconuts standing our way easily destroyed by the bomb container, allowing us to move on after opening the second door with another rotating cog. Standing in Amy's way is yet another door she has to open, this time with a passcode that Takal immediately conveys to you. I don't really know what the point of this is exactly, just have it be a normal door. Anyway, to access it, we need to hit the switch in the centre of the room, climbing the stairs, avoiding the rings scattered around the base. This switch will flood the room with the water from the water tanks, elevating the platform we need to use to jump over to the door. The rest of this section went off without a hitch, carefully traversing the linear corridors, avoiding the rings and jumping over the spikes, evading zero along the way. We eventually reached a shaft in the wall that takes us to the the final section of the stage and this is where it all flew south. I feel like they placed the green shield at the beginning as an apology, but even then I somehow managed to get a game over here due to the awkward platforming section with the rotating cogs. Amy's minuscule top speed and lack of momentum just doesn't board well with the jumps I expect from you here, especially when you have to take her to avoid the oncoming rings. After replaying the first section and calming down as this place genuinely had me tilting, we opened the first locked door hitting Zero with a Pico Pico hammer anytime he was in our range. Literally placed right in front of the entrance to this locked door is a ring container box. Thankfully you can avoid it but the jump can be real awkward to pull off. This end of itself took a few restarts to finally pass through. The only advice I can possibly give you to tackle this section with the rotating cogs is to just take your time. Don't leap across until you're able to land at the height of its rotation and you'll be just fine. After crossing a few of them there is thankfully a checkpoint here. A check point I jumped over landing on top of a ring, meaning I have to restart this section all over again. Why did I do that? We easily cleared it on the next attempt though, opening the next door which takes us to a linear bridge we need to move via the switch so we can reach the next section. Amy's jump can reach this with no problem but it can be a tad nerd wrecking because of the bottomless pit. 
In the next section, I grab another green shield, only to immediately jump into a Bolton's pit. Now, in my defense, I got a little disoriented in where to go. There is a spring, however, I wasn't entirely sure if it would lead me into the path of rings. It doesn't, by the way. So, I was trying to see whether there was another path I could take, when there clearly wasn't. Upon reaching the next checkpoint, the game utterly screws me over, as it didn't activate despite walking through it. I mean, look at this bullshit. We're then sniped by the chaos-looking enemy somehow, even though its tongue didn't even connect with Amy, taking us all the way back to the beginning. I'm sorry, but that wasn't my fault, and we're so close to the end as well. On the final attempt we do actually manage to hit the checkpoint this time around and we reach the room that appears to be a dead end. Placing each of the blocks in their respective holes, Zero appears on the monitor only to be slapped by Amy after breaking through. Get wrecked! The final portion of Hot Shelter forces yet another one of these block puzzles in our way and all honesty it's not too difficult. The first three blocks are scattered along the floor with only the blue cube seemingly missing. This block is placed along one of the tubes above you reachable via a spring and just like that Hot Shelter is complete without collecting any rings. Literally every aspect that could have gone wrong went wrong here. From general mistakes to the game outright fucking with me, our shelter did everything it possibly could to test our resolve. With enough persistence we managed to overcome this obstacle but it was truly testing my patience by the end. With their escape attempt thwarted by Eggman, they discovered a secret Bernie had been keeping for all of this time. Stashed away in the locket the sick Chaos Emerald resides, allowing Eggman to increase the strength of the mighty Chaos once more. Gamma emerging to combat the trio, Amy diffuses the situation and escapes from the free falling egg carrier through the help of Tails. Parting ways in Station Square, our duo decides to search for information pertaining to Birdie's family, exploring the jungle of the mystic ruins until they found Eggman's secret base, bringing us to the final stage of this challenge, Final Egg. Now Amy's final leg takes place in Sonic's first section, you know Crane Central? But in all honesty it was a lot easier this time around, Amy's low top speed actually suits his layout far more in my experience, as I had an easier time simply not running into things unlike the last time we were here. Whilst yeah, everything that made final leg suck is still present in Amy's version, some of the obstacles such as the laser gates or other banics were easily avoidable through the use of her hammer vault. Vaulting over the numerous laser gates we reach a switch that you need to activate in order to bring the elevator down to the current level. Now you have these constructions on either side that the car stage you should have behind so Sarah doesn't see you, although since I literally vaulted over the laser gates rather than destroying the robots to activate them, Zero was literally stuck there and couldn't proceed any further. Once we actually enter the elevator though, this is where Final Leg begins to rear its ugly head. You see the exit of the elevator on the second floor is littered by four rings. From a first glance there appears to be a small gap in between along the red strip on the floor, so in theory you could just jump onto that strip and then jump away from the rings right? Well, not exactly. Due to Amy's junk hitbox, any attempt to move from this position will result in collecting one of the two front rings. So next I try simply inching my way out of the elevator which led to Amy falling through a crack and to her demise. It got to a point where I was just about ready to call it quits and deem his challenge unbeatable, although thankfully Lady Luck was on our side and I was able to come up with a working strategy. It's quite finicky but if you hug the wall of the elevator and get a starting run up, you should have enough momentum to jump over the rings as long as you hold up the moment you exit it. When performed correctly, the hitbox of the construction should push Amy forward and away from the rings, allowing you to continue on from here. Thank god that worked out. With that obstacle cleared, the rest of the stage was barely worth mentioning, aside from the room with all the doors towards the end. Only one of said doors contains a way forward, while the rest are dead ends filled with spinners. I can't confirm this but I swear the correct door changes every time. The way forward always seems to be the final door I check, even if said door was different from the last time but I can't really confirm if this is the case. Once we eventually find our way, only one spinner stands in our way of the balloon and with that, we clear Amy's final stage without collecting a single ring. Coming up empty handed, Amy theorises that Birdie's family may still be on the egg carrier, and despite it literally free falling from the sky, thankfully the flying fortress remained intact, peacefully floating in the ocean reachable via the raft in the mystic ruins. The meaning of not giving up written within his code, Zero continues to pursue them injuring the blue bird with its homing laser, forcing Amy to take matters into her own hands in this first and only boss battle. After all the inconveniences this arsehole has put through, we finally had the opportunity to slap him into high heaven. It's unfortunate however, Zero's moveset in this battle practically consists of all the attacks he's capable of in the levels themselves, making this feel more like a rival fight than anything. You're supposed to hit him into the electric gates which will expose the weak spot under his helmet that you need to hit, three hits and he goes down. The strategy the strategy for this fight basically comes down to jump and swing. Sometimes Zero is impossible to stagger during his attack animations, so you just need to continuously jump until he's vulnerable again, and the rings here are placed sporadically around the outer edge of the arena, so you really shouldn't have any trouble avoiding them. With Zero's destruction, Amy finally discovers her independence, concluding this challenge with the knowledge that yes, it is possible to beat Amy's story of Sonic Adventure without collecting a single ring. Now this challenge was a ton of fun overall, Amy's lack of speed really made for an interesting gameplay experience accompanied by the puzzle elements 
items that some of these levels had to offer, as well as the tension crafted from Zero's barrage in the tents of taking you out. Whilst he's harmless for the most part, his presence was a constant pressure on my mind, which did lead to some beginner mistakes on my part. With four stories down, join us again next week when we take on this challenge again to see where it's possible to beat Big Story without collecting a single ring. And I think the answer might just surprise you. For now though, I've taken up enough of your time, so take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.